It's hard to tell if this is distribution or a period of consolidation, some very interesting price action. On yesterday's video, we, we talked about the key levels of support being cracked and then the possibility of the bulls stepping back up to repair those gaps. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit more today. Now, on today's episode, it's going to be a shorter than usual. I'm going to be going over 30-minute time frames and introducing you just a, a different look and style to the charts I'm adding a volume overlay, but it's um, going from the price scale so you can visually see periods of distribution and potentially where we might get pullbacks to. If it's your first time here, my name is Michael Silva. This is the Daily Stock Market Brief. Um, we do these videos Monday through Friday. We use technical analysis and intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. Let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. All right, welcome back. We're going to start off with the market dashboard. What do you know? What's leading the way? We have five five sectors of the S&P 500 in the green today. We have industrials, which we've been talking about. We had healthcare, financials, materials, and energy. So these continue to kind of lead the way here for the S&P 500. Energy, big update, 3.23%. I know we have a lot of energy companies um uh, releasing earnings today. So I, I talked about that on my Patreon about one specific stock that I am having a very close eye on that I'm interested to get into. Materials from a relative performance, we saw that from the ro rotation graphs look pretty strong as well as industrials. Uh, financials on that chart do look a little weak, but um, they continue to, to perform from an absolute basis, which is quite nice. Over here on the left-hand side, you can see the sectors where they finished for the day. Um, as far as the top performers go, I mean, we really had, I mean, it was relatively flat, but uh, we have the NYSE there up at 0.36% in the TSX, which was up 0.64%. Um, other than that, relatively flat overall, just some just some very weird price action. So let's just hop into the indices and we'll go through that. The first one I want to start off with is the SPY. And what do we got going on here? So first off, we talked about this box right here that this price action has been consolidating. And then we had that crack through that key level. And we said that there's a possibility that we come back and back test to fill and repair that gap. Now, the gap hasn't fully been repaired. However, if you just look at it from the low of this crack, that candle, that wick, it actually did fully come up there and then get rejected. So it did get rejected within that area and then we headed a little bit lower. Now, what I wanna call out here is just notice the volume here on the left-hand side. You can see just a large spike in volume. And this is due to the fact that we're having a lot of trading chop back and forth, it's just crazy price action. So this area is either one, uh, just an interesting period of distribution where if we crack through this 412, there really isn't much volume beneath us up until the point of around 390. You can see here some big spikes in volume here. Now, remember how April started off. April, most of this volume doesn't exist is because we were gapped through the overnight session. So what I'm thinking is if we do decide to head lower and we crack through 412, which this is kind of a, a support zone, I think it might be very easy to go test these uh, two gaps beneath us for potentially a good opportunity to start looking for hedge long positions. Uh, you can see right around here, 392 to 396, this kind of zone, which I would imagine that if we crack through that, we could see some support. And if you look at the SPY on the daily time frame, I just want to highlight one very, very low volume on today's price action as we gapped up in the overnight session and kind of just rolled itself over. Uh, just. You know, the, the, the key area to watch out for now is this 410. So if we start cracking through 410, that's where we'd head around this previous low, right around 395. You can see that right here around 395 um, from the 30 minute perspective. And you can see it right here, this resistance, resistance when we broke through, it acted uh, pretty strongly in the overnight session. So uh, continue to watch this, see what develops. Just look at these price actions. See these little tiny uh, bodies here on these, you know, just throughout the throughout here. This to me says a lot of indecision is taking place. And when you see a lot of indecision take place, it could typically mean some sort of a topping. Now, it has to be confirmed. Uh, and if it is confirmed, we need to see a crack below 410. Um, one other thing that I want to point out here is just from the daily uh, 5 EMA perspective, the bears did uh, continue to hold control of that. So continue to be very careful trading and investing in this environment. Um, it's very hard to swing trade in this environment because we're not really getting any anywhere here on the broad market. Um, luckily, you know, if you if you follow me on the Patreon, we have found some pretty uh, significant winners. Got shaken out of a few positions, but overall doing quite well. Now, from a 
BP SPX signal chart perspective, nothing really going on here other than this negative divergence is playing out. So it still has room to head a little bit lower. Um, and we are kind of overextended on this reading up here, but not, not nothing crazy. So nothing's alarming me. Let's look at the VIX. The VIX um, immediate risk here is to the downside, obviously. And you can see the S&P 500 push up higher. We have two gaps beneath us, two gaps above us at this particular point in time. Now, what I would not suggest, but what I what I am looking forward to is if is if we have a spike here in the VIX to go long if we start filling into these gaps. So for example, 24 to around 26, you'd want to start looking at areas uh, to go long with because you know those gaps can act as an area of resistance and then it could head lower. So that's what I would be looking at as far as um, if you're shorting the market, if it comes up here, the VIX comes up into these ranges, you'd want to consider, you know, peeling some profits off the table um, if the VIX spikes up to there. Uh, but keep in mind, like I said, two gaps beneath us. So that does suggest that if we go and fill those gaps, the market can obviously head higher. Let's look at the Qs. The uh, Qs, the NASDAQ is not doing uh, nearly as well. You can see here, we crack through this key level and we continue to head lower. We try to make it back for a back test today, couldn't quite get it, and then we sold off again. Now, notice how this big volume area right here, this big chunk, this box that it's in, now this is an area of resistance. So it's gonna take a lot for the bulls to get back through here. Now we crack through this key level and notice how there's not much volume be between these two boxes here. Okay, so you can see more volume here and less volume here. Now that could be due in part because the month of April we had a lot of gaps through this. Okay, so there might be more uh, volume that develops over time. However, what you would want to consider here for, from a hedge long perspective is, is to see if this actually falls a little bit lower. I would consider right around 314 to 316 now for looking for uh, hedge long positions because you see that big bar of volume over here. So there's probably going to act as some sort of area of support to potentially catch a uh, long uh, position or if you're looking for individual tech stocks or stuff like that and we come into this range. Um, that, that to me would make sense from a risk versus reward standpoint. From a daily perspective, you can see here I'm just struggling to get back above this uh, this little box right here. You can see that on the 30 minute time frame, that was about 334. So yeah, 334 right here, it's struggling. It came back up, almost tested it and then headed a little bit lower, but we are still above the 50 day moving average. And we have some support down with beneath us too as well. So you can see this green support that we broke through, that was right around 315 to 320, this is zone. And like I said, if you go back over here, you can see 315 to 320 right here where this stack of volume is. So understand that you can see some support here if we pull into those areas. Uh, this is why it would make sense from a hedge long perspective. Okay. Um, one other thing to kind of keep an eye on here is the BP chart for the NDX. It is moving into oversold territory. So that means we could very well um, make for a good long sided entry. It's just you want you want these signal charts to match with like areas of support and resistance on the um, the price action charts here too. So for me personally, I would like to see it more down in this area, which would take the BP chart even to more oversold territory. And then I'd feel a lot more confident adding into a long position at, at around that range. Now let's look at the DIA 30 minute time frame. Very similar, look at this price action. Today we eked out um, a new intraday all time high. So we've been just chopping back and forth. You can see just what like what's going on here. You can see big spikes in volume. So this is now gonna be acting as an area of support if we start breaking out, or it's gonna act in as an area of resistance if we start breaking down. As far as where the next area of support is, you can see this zone, um, really these two bottom candles right here uh, would act most likely more as an area of support. And that's right around 326 to 328 on the DIA, which is the industrials, um, the Dow Jones Industrial ETF. So. If we crack through that, that's where I'd be looking for a hedge long uh, at this particular point in time. If we look at the Dow Jones uh, BP chart, you can see here we are moving into a little bit of an over a bot territory, which does suggest, um, okay, if we get over bot, perhaps this might play out more to the downside, but we need to get confirmed breaks to the, to, to the end of this, um, sorry, below this uh, 337 range here to, to kind of understand that this could be just an area of distribution. But like I said, we are not there at this particular point in time. 
Well, the last one I want to go over is the IWM. The IWM is really all over the place. So the only thing that I want to call out is what I can visually see here. We have one, just a lot of volume within where the current price action is. So I think that the break to the upside or break to the downside could be pretty aggressive. Um, only because one, we don't really have much volume beneath us. So it can be a very quick fall. This could be a bear pennant pattern forming right here. So watch for the crack beneath us. If we start getting going above, um, we do have this gap. So 226 would be an area of resistance, but a full measured move would take us probably more to this um, bar of volume right here where we had this chop back and forth, which would be right around 227.50 to 228, okay? So that's all I have for you on today's market brief. I didn't go over gold. I didn't go over silver um, or oil or may, many of the commodities, dollar, et cetera. I'll, go, I'll be getting more in depth to that um, most likely tomorrow or the month, the weekly recap. I just wanted to quickly go over the price action of the indices because things are getting uh, very, very difficult to be in this environment. Now, if you didn't watch the first video that I did to forecast the month of May, um, you can go back and watch that because we did talk about um, that month of May is typically, um, from a seasonality perspective, a weak performer, and you typically see strength from a seasonality perspective in the dollar. And we are starting to see a little bit of strength here in the dollar, which could continue to send various commodities down, and it could also apply pressure to um, the S&P 500 as well, as, as we've seen it has this negative correlation. So be careful out there. Um, manage your stops. Manage your risk. Focus on that before entering any in, in, entering into any trade. Um, that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Have a good rest.